Hello and welcome, you're back for Operation Spectral Sword. This is an alien terror attack in Sydney, Australia. The aliens kind of caught us with our pants down, it's kind of ironic. The whole month I've been saying, there's going to be a terror attack, there's going to be a terror attack. It came, it was nothing but Seekers and Chrysalids. I was like, I told you guys, a terror attack. Then they hit us with this one, right after one of the hardest missions we fought all campaign. All our A-team is kind of out for a month. Um, yeah, they really caught us for this one. Let's get down there. Uh, we've got a decent team st still, so we're going to see what we can do. Solid copy, Big Sky. Strike One has been given the green light. Your highest priority is to protect those civilians. So, this is going to be a mission that's uh, probably a little bit traumatizing for me and quite close to my heart because, of course, you know, having been to Sydney, having lived in Sydney, having been born in Sydney even, you know, of course, I, I recognize this uh, burger neighborhood district gas station auto repair shop truck stop that we're currently in. I mean, Firaxis has perhaps designed this place a little bit too accurately, you know? Childhood memories just coming flooding back to me now. Any Sydney side are going to be very familiar with the classic Sydney skyline uh, as recreated here. A lot of uh, obvious building landmarks. You can see uh, there's the, the Robbie Nintendo Memorial building back there. You can see we built that because we love Robbie so much. Um, yeah, just... Just absolutely very, uh, very, uh, just, just a real hallmark of Sydney life right here in this map. There's Bob. Hi, Bob. I grew up with him. I went to school with him. Um, but to get into the actual mission, you know, uh, the idea here is basically I've got two rockets. How am I going to use them best? Now, we've got a lot of juicy gas pumps to blow up in the middle and also a lot of just great open area to engage from in the middle. Um, the idea here is to keep this going quickly. Uh, where's my scat? DSM. Uh, to keep this going quickly so we lose as few civilians as possible the time. DSM's going to make a big move up first. We're going to throw a scan out here. Uh, try and reveal as much as we can. Uh, the rest of the squad's going to be going for this doorway. We're going to do a turn 2 breach into this building. Take this building as quickly as possible. Uh, turn 3 we're going to be set up on this wall if we haven't made contact by then. And then turns onward. We're going to be pushing through with an assault team through the gas station area while our rockets, sniper, and infantry are kind of backing us up uh, with the gunner back from here. If the assault team gets into trouble, they can pull back. Um, you know, otherwise, we'll be moving up through the gas pumps, trying to save as many civilians as possible. So that's basically the idea. All right, well, that didn't sound good, so let's get out there. Some kind of large crash is happening. Stop crashing your cars, people! I know this is terrifying, but just act like it doesn't happen. Like, I mean, these people don't know! These people out on the road don't know, they're just driving the fucking work. They don't care, they don't know there's a terror attack happening. He's going to fucking Krispy Kreme, he doesn't even know. Anyway. Aye, aye, Commander. Alright, no contact yet. So we're gonna wanna throw a scan out here. Oh, it stopped. The terror attack's over. No, wait, there it is again. Um, we're going to want to reveal as much as we can here. So probably... That should be... No, no, that's not going to reveal to the right. If I stick it here... It's problem because depending on where you put it outside of a full cover, it's going to block in that direction, but I think that reveals the most pertinent information. We've got eyes on the AR. Should reveal everything but directly behind this pole. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty good. Alright, with that revealed, uh, let's just get the rest of our squad up in position, I suppose. Let's see, who, who can move up to that doorway? Okay, sadly, none of the people who really need to be on that doorway can make it to that doorway. I guess Iku can move up. And who else? Let's put uh, let's put J Bows up. Confirmed. Closing on target position now. Cell can go on the door. Ten four. We won't quite put Pete on the door because it's one tile further than we've scouted and. Oh. Actually, no. There's line of sight blockers. We can't reveal doing that. That's good. 
Otherwise, there's like the 1% chance we reveal chrysalids with it, which is not what we want. That's pretty much like the worst part of any Terra mission, the, the one tile chrysalid activation. And of course, we've had that happen. So I shouldn't have to tell you guys about that. Alright, so... Oh. Okay, I was about to say we don't have time to steady a good breach here because it's a terror mission, but we got something that can open doors. Oh, chrysalids. Actually, what am I saying? Every pod can open doors. Um, except drones. Drones can open doors. It's not drones, guys. Ooh. And those are the footsteps of a mechtoid. This is going to be our first mechtoid of the campaign, which is... Actually, not that new to me because I've been I've fought about a hundred mech toys in my Twitch campaign by now. Um, but it'll be new for you guys if you haven't seen them before. Unless it's a sector pod, um, which seems unlikely. All right. Well, there is a pod in here. We don't know what it is, but with two civilians already dead in just the first turn, I don't think we have a lot of time to steady our weapons. Worst case, we can pull back into this room to deal with it. I think it's better to just go at this point. Nothing. Maybe it went outside. Let's move, um... Let's move up here to find out what it is. Aye, aye, Commander. Maybe they went outside. Maybe it was a civilian. At what point did the door open? Maybe it was a civilian. There now. Alright, well, let's gingerly just gingerly move in. Roger, tracking. Trying not to reveal too much ground here. We don't want any nasty activations. Headed there now. Could be mutons. Could be floaters. We haven't heard what they are. We don't know. Yeah. The move. Aye, aye. Just can't be drones. That's the one thing it can't be. It definitely can't be drones. Drones are not open doors. It's kind of funny. Alright, I think that, that must be the pod. Lids? Is it li it's lids? It's lids. I think. Oh shit, what the fuck? Okay, it's lids and they circle around the back and then they walk back in. No, that's not what happened. They were hiding underneath the counter. They were hiding underneath the counter like geniuses. Oh my god, don't. No. Oh, great shot. Oh no, wait, that wasn't a lightning reflex as one. Ah! I hate it when Chrysalids are smart enough to lead with lightning reflexes. Oh, and they got a little zombie pal. And that's a real zombie, that's not a fake zombie. That's a, that's a zombie that's gonna birth a chrysalid too. Ooh! Double chrysalid activation! They're sandwiching us. How interesting. Another civilian dead? Well, as long as we don't draw the mectoid. Right? Oh boy. Okay, so... This is actually okay because, let's see how much ammo do- fuck! Now see that's the bad thing, is Drake's used all her shotgun ammo on close combat and overwatch. That's kind of bad, you kind of count your assault to close encounters every chrysalid. Eh, uh, but I think we're still gonna be okay, I mean we can grenade these fuckers over here. I think we're still gonna be okay. Not gonna be able to kill that zombie this turn, but he just got made, so he's not about to turn into chrysalids, so we should be able to ignore him. You're a waste of a sniper shot. Maybe what I should do here. Alright, maybe what I should do. Move Pete back That's here to start, right? Okay, now blow all this shit up, right? We have to make sure that this wall gets blown up for Iku. So we'll take this guy instead of the, the middle one. 
Because we gotta make sure this wall gets blown up for Iku. Because we need that sniper damage. Iku, can you see after all that? Yes! So now we can spend the high damage sniper shot on something a little bit more deserving, like, you know, for example, this guy. Perfect shot through the improvised murder hole. Excellent work, Iku. That's that's a tough shot, man, considering he made that within like a split second of that grenade going off. That's a pretty tough shot, Iku. That's good stuff. Alright, now... We can... beepity boopity boopity boppity over here. To kill these two. Okay. Drake is not done having expended all her shotgun shots within two seconds. She's going even more ham. Bye -bye. Drake cannot stop killing. Ooh, yeah. all out. That's what I call a professional. Oh, we've still got this guy over here. The SMG is going to be well suited for taking him out. Perfect work, Kong. High damage for an SMG. Very impressive. Alright, now what about you guys? Um, it seems only fair that we rapid fire you to death. Okay. That just seems reasonable at this point. Oh. Out of the game. You're killing machines, squad. You're absolute killing machines. You lean green killing machines. Roger that. I'm in awe. Absolutely badass! Except for that, that wasn't very good damage. But until then! Absolutely badass, again. Marchando. Dead. Adios. Well that's a good way to start off your day, that's two chrysalid pods dead within what? Was that the second turn? Third turn. Take a sip from my orange soda. That's good because that's well, that's not good, but that's two less chrysalid pods to taunt, uh, to to terrorize you, to terrorize you, to taunt you while there's a mectoid out there. Um, so next thing we're gonna need to do is get our squad ready for said mectoid. Now it might be a little dangerous to move up without ammo and without my sniper ready to disable. But worst case, I can Lightning Reflexes run the Mechtoid Overwatch, and it shouldn't be that risky. Compared to the percentage chance risk of the Mechtoid even being at this point, no, it's probably, it, it, you know, it could be further on the map. But if it is there, I can run the Overwatch with the Scouts, and then move the Scout first. And what I'm kind of scared about is that, like, if I, you know, I mean, if I just sit here and reload and don't move up, I'm just letting more of these civilians die, and... We gotta save these poor little sips, man. They're fucking dying in droves. If we move to the right, that actually cuts quite a bit of the risk. Because it does sound like it's it, it's in that direction, I think. Moving to position. And it's obviously not behind us. Headed there now. That or I'm going crazy, I'm I, I fucking doubt myself now, because like, I'm like, no, I definitely heard it in that direction, and then I start to think through my primitive monkey brain, I'm like, wait, On the move. did I hear it in that direction? Moving out. Will do. Me allí. Hopefully after this reload, Moving. next turn we can get um, a scanner in that direction to find out for sure, and also see what else is oh, out there. Yeah. Reloaded. Locked and loaded. Good to go. We're green to go. Kill Ready to engage. Nice little reload round. Yeah. Wait, what's that? It's making that noise. Wait, I, wait, I didn't get to hear. What was that? Was that mutons? It sounded kind of like a muton roll. It must be mutons. Chrysalids. Well, we need to get moving. People are fucking dying in droves out here. It's awful. Should be able to save these two. Go on, get going. And probably for a scan out. 
Uh, it's kind of a shitty scan because if I, wherever I throw it, I'm only really revealing this part right here. And this right side, like a little bit, but then that's a completely different scan. I'd rather probably like wait, move up on the roof or this position and then... I, I want to get a scan beyond the trucks because that's like the other like high congestion point of this map is they're always behind these freaking trucks and you don't get to see them until you're on top of them because the trucks are line of sight blockers. Let's try to clear out to the right while we're at it. Rocketeer in position. And then move out with the assault. Mechtoids always go on Overwatch with their first move, so if I'd done that the other way around and there was a Mechtoid here and it had gone on Overwatch, I wouldn't have been able to move Organ in the position. Let's move you in a position as well. You. Can maybe go here? Yeah, that seems reasonable. Time to motor. Seems we're focusing down here. It's probably better than this position where Iku's gonna get blocked by the gas pump. The gas pumps are a bit annoying for line of sight, unfortunately. Stick you in position there, because you don't have to worry about that as much. You can move next turn, worst case. Heading there now. Alright. I'm on the move. Affirmative covering now. Reload that lad's pistol that you did I'm so much ready. work with Drake. Roger that. Roger that. Scanning. Scanning. Dropping more bodies of that thing than a commissar, I swear to god. So we've got pretty good base of fire here in the building like we wanted it. Oh my god, they're... They're dying so fucking quick, I gotta keep moving. Heading to that location. It's fucking terrible. They're just getting destroyed. Hopefully this reveals some pods. It should do. Incoming There's like two or three pods down here. It appears the aliens have outfitted the sectoid Ooh. creature we previously encountered with some form of mechanized body armor. This was likely an effort to improve their combat power. We should exercise caution. No, that's a seeker. Uh, that, that, that's a seeker, Valen. Oh wait, no, there it is. There it is. So, if you haven't seen this before... Um, this is the aptly named Mechtoid, uh, the Mechtopod, Sectopoidopod, um, these things are pretty scary, but as long as you've got a decent amount of heat ammo, or even just enough disabling shots, you know, that kind of shit, as long as you've got the tools in your kit to take it apart, they can be beat. Uh, and I think we've got more than enough heat rockets and disabling shot and heat rapid fire gunner, I think we're gonna be able to take this thing on, as long as we don't tumble with the crystals at the same time. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, but with the scan thrown out there, we can kind of run everybody up, double move to get into position early. Maybe even take the roof. Ah, line of sight might be shitty. Let's not risk it. Hey, Marta. But we do need to get people ready to engage this thing. Ooh, I can draw those seekers right now. Better not do it just yet, better wait. Maybe even move Eco up to this position. Nah, put a Rocketeer here. But if the Mechtoid takes the wrong position, I won't be able to shoot him. Ooh, I don't know. It might be worth moving Eku. I don't know. It's it's really tough. That's a really awkward position to place a sniper. This little alleyway here. I think the, the disabling shot is the most important thing, so I've got to put him in position. Affirmative. Moving out. Even if it does put him quite close to the fight, and it does take a position a Rocketeer would otherwise take. Being house of chrysalids, uh, comforting as always. We're gonna get our rocketeers in a position to be ready. Getting it done. Sell. Get yourself ready. Roger, Dodger. Potato, you can chuck grenades Hold from the roof. Ass. Maybe I should just put my rocketeers on the roof too. I don't know. Bit late now for Roger, Dodger. that. Position confirmed. Comfort zone. All right, so I don't really care a whole lot about which of these pods we activate first, as long as we don't activate them all at once. Thanks, game. That, that's nice of you. What the fuck? Shoot that cheating motherfucker! What is that shit? 
first the chrysalids come out from under the counter, now a seeker from inside that taxi. Hey, I'm walking here, where you think you are? De Niro? Well, this is good. I can solo these seekers without activating the lids in the mechtoid. What's my range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Counting with Beagle, always fun. So as long as I don't move up to this taxi, which I have no reason to do, we won't activate the, the chrysalids, that's fine. Shoot the big one in its stupid, ugly face. Merlin actually can't see a whole lot, which is annoying. Ah, but you can see that one, can't you? Yes, you can. Not really the one I want you to be engaging, though, to be honest. Would really rather you were engaging the big one. That one's a bit more of a threat. I might move you to this position to do that. Actually, yeah, move you one over. Oh, no, you can see that one. I'm totally blind. Um, don't mind me, I'm just totally blind. Oh, well, there you go. Can always happen on 250%. And often does. Now, worst case, we can uh, not disable it. Ignore everything I was just about to say. Worst case, we can shred it, I suppose. It's just not really ideal. A bit unfortunate that Merlin can't really see it. But it looks like we'll have to burn a shredder here. Um, which is unfortunate, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah, may as well use UJ Wells. Yeah, this is going to be the way the cookie crumbles today, unfortunately. But hey, JBALs can get a shredder in, so that's good. Solid shredder, solid work. Now you should be easy meat. Headed there now. For the rest of my team. I guess worst case I'll keep the grenade just to finish them both off, just in case I need it. But hopefully we won't have to waste a grenade on that, that'd be a bit of a shame. Move to this position. Headed there now. See if I can get another double with Drake, because she's feeling it. She's really feeling it. Oh my god. Incredible. Ah. Buggy baby bumpers. Use that underslung pistol mount. That is just some freaking terrible damage, even of a laser pistol. You got gun- You're a gunslinger, Drake, don't you? You're a gunslinger! You should be ashamed of yourself. Alright, what's uh, my chance to hit here? 79, 80 something, blah. Yeah, we need to steady aim to reliably hit, so we'll do that. No longer a threat. Now, we just gotta finish off your buddy, and not waste a grenade on him. Hey! What a time to be alive. Now I can position Iku to have a better disabling shot when that mechtoid runs out of us. And it's been a pretty good day. They're gonna run off and impregnate someone, which is not good. We're just gonna have to keep going. And I believe we have still got a mech toy pod here, don't we? Um, this could make for a pretty solid breach on this mech toy because the truck's in the way. Because the mech toy is guaranteed to overwatch when it's revealed, we could flank around the side with like someone to make sure it's still there. And then once it is, use a heat grenade from Potato, blow up the truck, fire rockets through the truck, and just totally annihilate the thing with some perfect positioned rockets. I think that sounds pretty fun to me, don't know about you guys. I think I'm gonna go for that. That sounds like a lot of fun. 
Don't know about you guys, but if I was calling the shots, I'd say that sounds fucking awesome. Let's do that. Double time. Yes, indeed. Double time it. Uh, why don't you save a sieve on, on your way over, Cell? You're safe. Now get moving. Get out of here, scrub. Gotta make sure EQ's still gonna be in position to get a good disable, of course. So we'll probably put him on this taxi. Roger, tracking. That should be golden. On my way. Alright, this should be pretty juice juice. As long as it doesn't run out and surprise me while I'm doing this. In which case, uh, we chase the Overwatch off with lightning reflexes and we fuck it up I'm with everything move. else. Yes, Chrysalids, we know, my god. Fucking hell. It's like when you get a new puppy and your puppy's like, Aroo! and you're like, oh, that's cute. And then it keeps doing it. Oh, well, we gotta deal with the Chrysalids now. The Chrysalids are taking, getting the tension into their own hands right now. That is interesting. They're just sitting on top of the truck. Well, that is interesting. Who can even see that one on the truck? Anybody? Interesting. So people back here can see that one. One person. Plus the sniper. That's good enough for me. So they can jump over this roof. So consider that straight line movement. They should be able to get my guys at the front. So I probably want to move back for that last one. Prep a breach on the taxis instead for that mechtoid, which we're probably going to be forced to activate next turn. Letting, one, letting, letting these chrysalids live means they're probably going to kill a civilian, which really sucks, but we need to kill these chrysalids before we can breach the mechtoid, I think. Actually, this is the perfect position to fight these chrysalids because they can't jump over the flower pot. They have to run all the way around, so this is some, like, this is almost box strat shit right here. This is actually really good. Which means, dun dun dun, dun we should fuck this shit up. Like you, let's fuck you up. Let's fuck shit up. Kong. That's affirmative. Ding dong Kong. Excellent work. I'm about to start keeping score. Well, don't take, don't get too cocky. They're not dead yet. Oh, you can't even see them. What a very small window of sight we have on that thing. How absolutely interesting. Well, let's start off with the sniper. Good damage. And now for an 87, I'll take that. I could flush him, but... Oh! I mean, it's a hundred percent to hit, and they haven't got any damage resistance. Let's make it certain. There you go. He's dead. He's dead now. Sweet dreams for him. Okay. Let's run. We're holding the flower pot. Headed there now. Overwatch. Aye aye. Steady aim to deal with the. Ooh, hello. Oh wait. Oh no, I just revealed something that's wrong about my awesome plan. He can jump up onto the billboard. But the, bil the billboard should block him though, I think. I guess we're about to find out. Yeah, no, it's fine. Didn't even get past the flower pot. And yeah, the billboard would have blocked him, it's okay. Just not quite as much as I was expecting. And hey, that's pretty cool. He didn't kill any sub- oh, fuck you. <laughs> well, shit. Now, I gotta be careful here because explosives are gonna- Blow up this little asshole. That's. Let's see, did, did I study J Bells? I did. That's probably good because I can get a really accurate rocket, which isn't gonna blow up that civilian. Little shit. Um. <laughs> I, I can't even remember where that chrysalid went now. And apparently, any grenade is gonna blow that cab up. I don't believe that. 
That seems a bit ridiculous. Can anybody go get that civilian because he's an absolute shitler? No, really? No one? No one wants to go save the idiot? Why would you hide next to the... It's explosive, guy! Come on! Ah. You little shithead. There's no- it's a bug. There's no way that blowing up the cab of a truck is gonna... The, there's no- no, it's- oh, you could. I don't know. XCOM's a weird game. That's just complicating things. Because now if I leave the chrysalid for turn, it'll kill something. But there's probably a mectoid behind that cab. Oh wait, hang on. Maybe I can get eyes on it if I move to this position. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's all good. It's all good. No, it isn't. Fuck. Now I just wasted a move. I was hoping I could see it through here. Hmm. Okay, where's Petite? Petite. It only had like one health left, so what if. Moving out! We just grenade it. Oh, you can throw a grenade there and it won't blow the cab up. Yeah, whatever, kids. Incoming. Yeah, get fucked. I didn't fall for your shit. I'm Batman. That Chris- I mean, that mechtoid pod's probably moved by now. It's probably not even there anymore, but... You know, probably better to be safe rather twice. than sorry. I hate having to be sorry. Being sorry is the worst. You don't want to have to be sorry. Roger that. It's always better to be safe. Ready to engage. Ready to rock. We're green to go. recargado. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was expecting a civilian to run to that cab before it blew up and I'm like, no wait! No wait, take me! Take me with you! But not so. Now we can save this little shit! Position confirmed. Target and there it is! On, it's still there! Hey! Presto perfect! Papa John's! It's beautiful, it's delicious, you're gonna want a piece of the champ. It's fantastico. So, here's the thing about mechtoids, which makes it really good to kill them on the turn you meet them. Like, every enemy you want to kill on the turn you meet them. Extra good thing about mechtoids is, I, I can't remember if I said this before, but when these little shithead sectoids mind merge with it, they're going to give it this really nasty shield. Now, this is no ordinary extra HP bullshit. This is like a serious shield. It has a lot of damage resistance. Mechtoids already have damage resistance, and it, it grants even more. Like, you'll hit it with a fucking laser rifle, and it's like, bzz, bzz, fizzles off and you're like, oh, I did zero damage, that's great. You don't want to fuck with the shield. You want to kill the mechtoid before it gets the shield. The only saving grace we have if it did get the shield, which is why I was quite confident, is Hidamo ignores, or well, doesn't ignore, but Hidamo eats through the shield. Uh, it doesn't really give much of a shit. It still does reasonable damage, it's just not as much. Now we can blow up the cover and do quite a lot of damage to that sectoid there. Oh, but that's apparently going to... Fuck it. Fuck it, if it's such a big deal, I'll get off. Fine. I'll just move here, I guess. To position. I can't believe that's gonna blow up that cab, but I'll take its word for it. Better to be safe than sorry. Alright, now it, it was there, wasn't it? Yes. It was pressed right up. So we'll blow up some cover and open up the way for our rockets. <laughs> There, of course, uh, as is tradition for this map and for Sydney, are the hidden flight computers and alien salvage being transported inside this inconspicuous truck. It's always there. Now, this is interesting. Uh, the flight computers are actually blocking me from disabling shutting the mechtoid. Are they going to block my rockets? They are. That's, that's a piece of poop. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to apply some hilarious shredder action to this mectoid. Kind of expecting those flight computers to blow up. That's a little bit of a pain in my ass. And I have no lightning reflexes to deal with this thing now, too. So I'm gonna have to shred first and ask questions later. And because uh, Drake isn't in cover, if the shredder goes wrong, it can actually deal nasty damage to Drake. So we want to make sure we're not hitting Drake with it. That should be fine. Rockets away. That's really irritating. But there you go. Uh, hopefully with Shredder plus Heat plus a really accurate rocket, j is about to knock this out of the park. Or at the very least, blow up those flight computers. No, I, I don't think it can eat... I don't think it even can blow up the flight computers. Um, what is this? There's a civilian there? Hey. Hey! Hey, give me my turn back. There we go. Damn it, there's a sieve there. That's such a perfect rocket, too. Um, we'll just have to do it here, then. And you know what? If you get a 0 0.4 scatter onto that civilian, that's XCOM. Stick it right there. Bring in the pain. Diesel j -Bals. Oh, yeah! Absolutely wrecked. And hey, you know what? She doesn't know to sue XCOM because, for all she knows, the mectoid probably exploded on her. She doesn't know what happened. She didn't see. The line of sight blocker means she doesn't know that that was a Earth-made rocket that just... Um, took two-thirds of her health, which in civilian terms means she's never gonna walk again. She doesn't know that. It's fine. Uh, I'm gonna kill you, you little shithead. Get fucking wrecked. Target eliminated. Oh, and what this? I can see you too. Oh no. Is little baby gonna cry? Is little baby Gleep Gloop gonna cry? And there you go, that's that's mectoids. Like that's an early tier mectoid, they get much scarier. I'm continually impressed by the work of our soldiers. They seem to be extremely efficient. Thank you. Um Mectoids get much scarier than that. Like I'm that that was amazing. I'm, in Twitch, I'm the Twitch campaign, which is in the second year now, I'm used to mectoids of like twice that much health, twice that much damage resistance. Uh, they get reactive targeting and all this bullshit. Um, and also, uh, when the shield goes on them, it's like 11 DR. It's insane. So, being able to solo that one with like essentially two Rocketeers and a Grenadier, that's that's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, that went pretty well. Um, if the Chrysalids had hit us at the same time as the Mectoid, that would have been really bad because the Mectoid puts out a lot of firepower if you don't take care of it. Anyway, um... <laughs> Let's see, what do we got for J-Bows? Now, uh, I have to apologize because some people reminded me and they were right um, that during all the excitement of gearing up for the um, the landed transport, I forgot to actually talk about why I took Javelin. So, I'll deal with that afterwards. Um, but let's see here. Well, it's got to be Shredder. Why am I even looking at this? It's got to be Shredder. And I don't need to explain that. Chrysalid carcasses. Lost too many civs, sadly. We will be in touch, Commander. Australia not at all happy. I think we're putting a satellite over them this month, though, aren't we? Yeah. Residents of Darwin, Australia, bunker down after a spate of alien attack strike nearby territories, mate. Darwin doesn't give a fucking shit about Sydney. Are you kidding me? Darwin. Holy fuck! Nearby. It's all right. We're just gonna bunker down up here in Darwin. We're very afraid. Maybe Hobart should be scared too. What about Perth? Should we be scared in Perth? Anyway, um... Who was it? It was Renzol. So, let me go back and say why I took Javelin. Um, now, Snapshot and Javelin together doesn't make really any sense. Um, and I get that. Ideally, you would go fire in the whole Javelin or Snapshot Mayhem Danger Zone. Because Javelin is all about range and extra accuracy. You get longer range and, um, you know, you, you've got to have the accuracy to make those long range shots work. You're never going to snapshot in Javelin and expect it to be decent unless you have godly aim. Now, I get that. But, I used to be able to do that. Now, in all the betas, you could do snapshots, um, snapshot, Javelin, Rocket. I don't think Fire in the Hole even existed back then. Um, 
because you had shit like carbines gave their plus aim the rockets, beam lasers gave plus aim the rockets, so you had like another plus 14 aim off the bat. Um, and I took a lot of snapshots because I was like, yeah, fucking awesome, snapshots the best! Uh, and then of course, um, I had a really bad mission like two or three months ago where my rockets just fucked up, like gunner gunnery sergeant snapshot was just fucked up and I was like, wow, snapshot's terrible now, unless, you know, you build really smartly for it. Um, so anyway, I get that snapshot danger zone is what you want. That, and, you know, snapshot javelin is kind of a gimp. That said, I still want javelin. So even though I've kind of gimped myself with snapshot, I still wanted to take javelin regardless because it's really strong. And I especially needed it on the land of transport for those long range engagements. Being able to hit the cyber discs with steady aim javelins was crucial to engaging them properly. And uh, I'm glad I took it. Danger zone is good, but it makes it quite difficult because you've already got inaccurate rockets with snapshot. And then... If they, like, they've got a bigger blast radius, so you're more likely to hit yourself with them. You've got to be really careful of that. But it can be really good to make this really tanky, like, will the survive uh, snapshot danger zone rocketeer who just runs up and fucks shit up. Of course, in beta 15, I'm probably going to take tandem activated warheads, which is going to be a new perk. Um, but, you know, we're not there yet. Anyway, there's a little bit of a, a train of thought for you on that. Yeah, Australia not too happy. Uh, at all, unfortunately. That's alright, but uh, there's no rest for the wicked, unfortunately. It's right back into the fire for a council mission. Target escort. I quite enjoy this one, actually. This is rescuing uh, Professor Marizuki, I believe his name is, um, who is a scientist serving in a remote observatory. He, he looks through telescopes and ship, and he accidentally saw a UFO once, and we hired him to find more. Uh, and the aliens got really mad about that, so we have to go basically save him and blow up the Hubble telescope so that the aliens never learn its secrets. So basically, um, it's the observatory map, and it's a council mission, so you can get quite a nasty set of enemies. But $140, panic reduction, uh, and for scientists is really good. Because we also, I guess... Either Dr. Marizuki is worth four scientists, or we also rescue four other scientists while no one is looking. Or he's so popular that four scientists come to work for us. I don't know. We are confident that you will handle this matter with discretion. Anyway. Doesn't look like there's anyone I can skip to. Oh wait, no, there it is. Kamikaze and Volatile, I can skip to both of them. Squint, possibly, if I needed to. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, okay. Uh, libido Stolly, maybe. Shouldn't need it. Uh, I need to check what time this council mission showed up because there's a little bit of travel time, so let me just check. Alright, so it's 4.54 a.m. So we got that council mission at 4.54 a.m. Uh, with a 15 hour reaction window on a council mission. So that's basically 5 a.m. 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 9 now. <laughs> Nine, me, eleven. Let's say ten hours. To seeing your progress. So Kamikaze's definitely within range. Squint's definitely in range. Stolly is on the kind of getting their side of in range. Probably won't need to take her. Oh my God, Stolly's back! Oh wow, that's awesome. I it just processed in my brain that Stolly's been out since that bomb mission, hasn't she? <laughs> God bless her soul. Daishi definitely not in range. AO definitely not in range. But Squint and Kamikaze are my power couple. Probably no need to risk it for Stolly though, because we can just take Wutastic instead, and I'm unlikely to face a lot of mech on a council mission, I don't think. What's the rest of my squad gonna have? I'm. Do I even need them is the question. I mean, I've got... Zim, who is a better gunner, so I'm probably not even going to be taking, um, what's his, what's his name, Kamikaze? I got Van Dorn, who, is he a sergeant? No, he's a corporal. He's, he's at Kamikaze's level. I don't know. Let me, let me see what I'm going to do here. Alright, looks like we've got a pretty decent team here. Uh, we're just going to be, like, waiting, like, a second for Volatile, and I'm going to be pretty happy with it. There you go. Won't make you sit through the seconds this time. We are confident like I usually do. Handle this matter with discretion. Alright, now I just need to gear these guys up. I'll try to leave the perk choices to last if there's anything new from now on, but 
In this case, I think it's just like heat ammo on Payfork, which is a given. Anyway, leave this with me. I'm gonna speed this right up and then we're gonna get into this council mission. Alright, so I actually had a lot more perk choices uh, than I realized to deal with here, so uh, I did leave them till the end, like I said. Uh, I'm gonna do things a little differently with at least one of them. Let's just get into them. So I picked Heat on Payvog, obviously. Don't need to go into that. Um, for Morgan, now, I'm not necessarily gonna choose anything different here, but I will go into what people have been saying. A lot of people um, out there, big fans of Hit and Run, um, and you know, a lot of people are like, why doesn't Beagle ever take hit and run? He never even considers it. It's just like, you know, it doesn't exist to him. It's just closing cannons of rapid fire. Um, there's a time and a place for hit and run. Now, I haven't, I haven't really used it yet, to be honest. Like, I haven't really, you know, given it its fair shot in gameplay. But in my head, there's a time and a place for it. And that place is really rifle assaults. Now, I'm not, I, I think rifle assaults are really good later on. Right now, I'm kind of focusing on these tanker kind of assaults with tech sense. Gonna get all the defensive perks later on. And that's kind of like my ball game. Um, and for a tanker assault, I want them to be up close and personal. And I find close encounters is a little bit, just that little bit more um, effective there. Ignoring the extra five will you get. Because there's a lot of cases where I do use close encounters, where I do want to use it to hit people who are in cover. Like you can run up and get a 100% shot on like, you know, a little shithead sector or something who's in cover. And then, you know, move again. You know, it's, it's got its uses. Um, and of course, the big thing that really stops me from using hit and run as a total replacement for close encounters is it doesn't work on flying units and you know just last mission we used close encounters against the seeker to t tap it twice you know shit like that i mean like there's uh, there's a lot of times where i really do value the ability of close encounters to take out flying units like there's a lot of times where i run up underneath a floater who's low flying and and pick him twice with close encounters you know so it's got a lot of value for me there rapid fire is that minus 15 aim penalty gets pretty nasty um but it's also that um it, it, it's also that uh you, you haven't got the flexibility of being able to move and shoot and then do something else um but this because it combos with running gun and killer instinct later rapid fires where i go for my damage guys hit and runs kind of got its place on rifle infantry uh, rifle assaults but i just don't use them yet Maybe I will use them later on, and in that case you'll see me take hit and run. Maybe uh, also later on when I've got better answers to flyers, like more spread out mechs and shit like that. You're going to see me take hit and run on some new assaults, who knows. But, um, you know, at, at, at any time I'm likely to take hit and run, I'm probably going to start taking rapid fire for the running gun killer instant combo. Anyway, the point is right now it's close encounters on uh, Morgan. Like, I'm sure it's a great perk because you haven't got that range limitation. I just kind of prefer close encounters. You know, maybe I'm crazy. Um, for volatile, it's suppression. I just like having extra suppression on the squad. And now on Zim, this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, usually I go execution at a combo with flush uh, on my flush gunners. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different here and actually go danger zone. Um, the new danger zone is really good. How it's like got a five tile wide range now. Uh, and also, I want to try something a little bit different with Zim. Zim loves to kill shit. Zim just loves hosing shit down. So what I'm going to do with Zim is we're going to go... Um, we've got Flush, we've got Heat. Uh, and I'm probably going to try to go Danger Zone and then Mayhem at the bottom. And I'm going to try like a Heat uh, Danger Zone guy, I think. Um, it's not going to be super optimal because, of course, you can't Flush and then Suppress in the same turn. Uh, so, you know, I'm missing out on potentially having Holo Targeting on uh, the danger zone suppression and otherwise you know i'm missing out on the plus 10 plus 10 crit chance with flush but i think i can deal with missing out on that for trying out some heat and you know if it works really well i can always make you know another new gunner who is holo targeting heat you know danger zone but i think when you're fighting mech either the mayhem suppression heat's going to kill little flying units like drones or they're going to be big things like mech toys and sector pods that you don't really need holo targeting against anyway uh point being let's try a danger zone on zim I'm sure he won't regret it. And it is a useful perk to have, having that extra suppression. Um, apart from that, 
the squad's pretty much jacked up and good to go. I don't think there's any more uh, promotions to make. Um, sticking a heater on Varid because this is uh, this map can be a little bit dicky on having your sniper in position. It's I'm not taking a strike rifle because once you get on the roofs, it's great for squad sight and you don't want to miss out. But until you get on the roofs, it's good to have the extra secondary weapon there on him because he hasn't got snapshot. Um, the squad is pretty competent. Like Wutastic not being a corporal just means we're missing out on heat warheads. That's not too bad. Payfox missing out on fire in the hole again. We can kind of deal with that. Um, Burn cycles missing out on battle scanners. I'm bringing a scanner on W to make up for it. Apart from that, it's essentially a squad of corporals and sergeants, which is pretty competent at this point of the campaign. Morgan tanking. Uh, medic coming along to bring those med kits in case it's a thin man mission. You never know what you're going to be facing. Uh, and apart from that, it's really business as usual. So let's get out there and let's have a great time. Dropship has arrived. We're going to be putting down in Mexico for this mission. Okay. Um, well, a man of few words, everybody. Any questions? Um, join me next time as we go to save Professor Marizuki, or Dr. Marizuki, or whatever his title is. Dr. Marizuki, PhD, on Operation Cryptic Stranger. Until then, uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one.